Alf, you can't expose yourself like that. I might get banned. Okay, the pups are up because my dad's staying with me at the moment and we've got an extra dog and she's not allowed inside. So they have to get up and go and see each other. So still a little bit COVID-y. Um, but I thought I would vlog today. Why am I puffing from walking up the back stairs, honestly? Um, I thought I would vlog today and because I'm going to do some girly things, talk to you a little bit about my styling course that I've been doing and yeah, just catch up with some recent purchases. But first, coffee. So what you'll see here is that our water tank is taped up with waterproof tape because Mr. Addiction did not pack it appropriately when we travelled with it last and we haven't been able to find a spare part. So not everything in life can be beautiful people. See how the camera is like jumping in and out of focus? How crazy is that? It's going to take a while because it's temperature based and I overfilled it. I do not recommend filling milk into a milk throffer through the lens of your camera. Ha ha ha, look at that. All right. I usually like to do this two-handed because I like to pour the milk down the side of the cup to get all that chocolate to rise up. So I'm going to have to do that. ready mm. so I'm going to have these talons dealt with today got my first nail appointment I think for about like eight weeks my nail tech had a baby and I missed my last appointment because COVID so um, I did them myself which took forever and you can see that they're growing out quite a bit but I've got this kind of nude um, one so you can't notice as much Here's an example of the worst nail I did. <laughs> anyway, I didn't. Um, the problem with using Builder is that you can't get it on your cuticles at all because it will lift. So, um, so to start getting ready for the day, I've got this um, Mario Badescu facial spray. I don't know, just to add a little bit of moisture. This one smells like a rose water and herbs, which is very nice. Excuse the puffiness, like seriously, I still have quite a bit of congestion. You can probably hear it in my voice. Um, I'm honestly, I'm done with all of these side effects. I really am. Um, if you haven't been around here for previous get readies with, get readies with me, um, then you won't know that my combo is the Verso Hydration Serum and Neod, and I just put them together as my serums for the day. Kind of like whoop, that, and just press it in. <coughs> Sorry. Just had a coughing fit. Still happens. All right. 
and at the moment I am trying this free Mecca vitamin C serum that I got as a Beauty Loop member. That reminds me, I've just missed out on my free reward. God. But I'm trying this instead of my C Ferulic. I'm not sure if I like it or not, to be honest. It's not, I mean, it looks quite bougie. It's a lovely um, container, but yeah, I'm not sure if it's doing the brightening, the vitamin C brightening things, but I guess it's not really getting much of a chance to because I have been sick and dehydrated. Um, my other favorite, the Daphne Hydrolite gel moisturizer you can see i've had a little breakout here again so dry like my skin has been really dry with all this dehydration of congestion sure you really wanted to know that but you know you could you've got to take the good and the bad don't you give you a balanced view while i sound like kathleen turner And up we go, up we go. Alrighty. Now, um, <laughs> this lighting is terrible. I think I'm going to use a combination. I bought this little tool from my last facialist and it says it's from the V collection. And it literally, these little things, just grab your skin and pinch it up. Like, it's amazing. I think you can see it doing it and it just pinches it and peps it up and you just do it in an upwards motion you know to get the circulation happening get a bit of youth happening in between the brows oh that's nice this one here you're supposed to work onto your wrinkle lines or something like that like obviously it's temporary but whatever then i've got my Rose Quartz Stone. Oh, that feels so good. I'm just going to use that to try and reduce some puffiness around my jawline and around my eyes. Just gently. Someone looks like they need a little bit of anti-wrinkle treatment going on here. <laughs> oh dear, the shit that we share on YouTube. Right. Okay, now at the moment, I don't want any comments on this, but I am trialing taking the pill to help out with some lady problems. I've got to remember to take that because I've been off the pill for like, I don't know how long, a long time, 10 years or something. So I'm also going to add some sunscreen now, still loving my ultraviolet. I love that it's, um, I put about three pumps on that it's slightly tinted, but it's like a pinky tint. So it actually works as a really nice primer for your makeup as well, in my opinion. Aussie made, SPF 50. And weirdly, our winter sun is the sun that gets you because, because you lap it up, because you're, you're, dying for a bit of sun and so you're more inclined to go out in the sun unprotected than in summer where it's really obvious that you should you know take care of your skin yeah winter is kind of the worst so all right I am going to quickly brush my hair out because this towel is coming off my head and I'll be back So in this get ready with me, um, vlog, whatever, actually it's not a get ready with me. This is the get ready with me portion of the vlog. So today I, as I said, I'm going to get my nails done. Then I am going to have an early pre-lunch, I'm going to call it, with my friend Nadia, who's visiting from Melbourne at the moment. We went to the Fendi Made to Order together and... Actually, is that going to be any good for the sound? Maybe. Let's do it like that. 
Um, yes, with my friend Nadia, um, we did the Made to Order at Fendi together and Lucinda from Yellow Chic Road. So if you don't follow Lucinda already, she has a great channel where she basically mainly does unboxing. So she shares her new purchases um, and her and her mother have an amazing collection of bags. So if you don't already follow her channel, I will link it in the description box below. Um, we are going into the valley um, in Brisbane, um, James Street, it's a really beautiful spot. Um, so that'll be nice. I'll probably arrive a little earlier because of my nail appointment. Um, yeah, and then I'll be coming home and hanging out with my dad before he leaves on the next leg of his journey. So this morning is going to be pretty action packed. And I wanted to kind of take you through some of the learnings that I've had from the styling course. I'm also going to reveal to you a couple of things that I've purchased that, you know, um, I have not revealed yet on um, this channel. Uh, when I say this channel, I might have revealed them on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Um, I've just realized that I need to get my hair dryer out and get the fog condensation off my mirrors. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Does anyone else do it that way? <laughs> All right, so, um, yes, I'm so out of um, practice with the vlogging. I always use Hourglass Illusion Skin Tint. I raved on about this during Vlogmas. If you didn't see Vlogmas, it's still up as a playlist. I'll link the playlist below. But if you're new to my channel, it's probably a good way to get an insight around who I am normally. And I raved about this one during Vlogmas. So I take this shade beige and I use the Hourglass number two brush. I'm not going to go through everything in detail because it's more about the chat than it is about the products. But anyway, so this styling program that I'm doing, um, it's called the five stages to style and it is a paid program. I think it's about $700 um, and it's run by a Melbourne stylist um, and it's a combination of online modules that you can go through self-paced and there are some PDF documents that, you know, you can take away as refer reference material. Um, there are weekly Zoom conferences where questions that are la listed in the Facebook page based on your tasks for the week um, can be answered and um, I guess a little bit more practical examples um, around like body shape, um, features and things like that are shown in photos and all different shapes and sizes of people so that you can better identify things because I think when you look at yourself for too long, <laughs> you see all the things that you're not looking for. Um, and so to give you an example, the first um, module for the program is to figure out what is your body shape because your body shape has a lot to do with the type of clothes that you um, that will flatter you best. Um, it's meant to help you um, refine what you look for when you go shopping. So it's meant to make shopping easier. Once you know your shape, you know that certain cuts, for example, low rise, mid rise, high rise, V neck, crew neck, high neck, um, florals, um, stripes, block colors, like you'll know all of that stuff, um, sleeve lengths, um, trouser lengths, you'll know all of that stuff a lot better. Um, and so you can literally just kind of weave through the racks basically and go, that'll work for me, that won't, that'll work if I make this change, whatever else. So that's the first module. 
Um, now, in the program, and I'll link the program below, it's run twice a year, so you can do it from anywhere. Um, there are five different shapes. There's the hourglass, there is the triangle, the inverted triangle, the oval or diamond, and the rectangle. I think that's five. Um, and I thought that I was a rectangle because I don't think I have a very defined waist and I'm always dressing to accentuate the little bit of waist that I have. But my measurements tell me and the eyeball look tells me that I am an hourglass. So that, so the hourglass, I guess what you're looking at is always to accentuate the waist because you have shoulder measurements and hip measurements that are pretty much dead on and a waist measurement that's at least eight to 10 centimeters less than the measurement of the shoulder and the hips. So that was a big insight for me because I also think I'm a bit of a rectangle. Um, I guess the good news is that a lot of the tips and tricks around hourglass and rectangles are the same, which is try and accentuate your waist or define your waist uh, if you have one. And so that um, kind of explains when I go through a lot of my outfit of the day pictures, and I'll put some up here for reference, why certain outfits I really like wearing, I really like on me. There's certain dress styles that I really enjoy wearing. Um, and now I know why, um, which is a really big insight because when you don't know why something works, you kind of do fashion potluck where you buy a lot of stuff and you're just like, oh, I love this print or I want to be able to wear this kind of style and it looks terrible on me. Why? Why is it? And you automatically go into because I'm fat, because I'm old, because I'm short, because I'm whatever, instead of it just doesn't work for my body shape. And I think that's quite liberating. So um, the other part, I guess, which we've just gone through in module two is features and scale. So while I'm doing my face, it's actually really relevant because um, I'm just adding some Laura Mercier translucent powder. And yes, I'm doing it before I put blush and highlighter on because that just works better for me. So when you talk about your features and scale, we're talking about firstly your face and whether we know it or not, your face has a lot to do with what kind of hairstyles work best on you and what kind of fabrics, prints, patterns, those sorts of things work best on you. And it's a really weird thing that our eyes do. Um, just tidy these up a little bit. It's a really thing that our eyes do. So um, case in point, I have learned that I have curved features. So I have a curved brow, I've got round eyes, I've got a rounded nose, and I've got full lips. That makes me a curved featured person. What I learned was that curved features work well with florals, a wave in their hair because curved, curved, curved. So things like a leopard print, floral prints, things that have rounded edges look really good with my kind of facial features, which if again, I look at the outfits that I'm drawn to, what's in my wardrobe that I really enjoy wearing, I can see that that's true. I feel good in those things. Um, then there are other different face shapes. I've got a little hair on my nose. There are other different face shapes like um, straight features where the eyebrows kind of come straight across. The eyes are smaller, more almond shaped and the lips are thinner, less full. Um, so think of my fabulous uh, Jennifer Connolly, my style icon. Um, and so she can, she suits like straight hair, looks beautifully chic on her, um, quite angular cut clothing, stripes, you know, those sorts of things, block colors, really futuristic, modern looking clothing looks great on her. And that's why, 
And then there's balanced, which is a combination. So you might have, you know, quite straight eyebrows, almond eyes and big full lips. So I think like Angelina Jolie's kind of like that. Um, where you can kind of wear your hair either way, but you might not have a preference for, say, florals or um, any print really, or stripes, for example, you might just prefer block colours. So for me, it's been great, and it's actually good talking through it with you, like getting it all solidified in my head, that um, now I know why I'm drawn to certain, certain things. So there's lots of things I'm doing right, right? But there's some things that I can learn. And you will notice in my OOTDs that I've been playing around with some straight leg pants. That's one of the reasons because I'm trying to create balance between my shoulders and my legs. So rather than my legs going in like this with a skinny cut jean, I am trying to create, you know, uh, length in that way. I'm not convinced, like I'm playing around with it a bit. It works with heels, but I don't like it with trainers. And I'm not going to wear heels all the time, especially on the weekends. So um, I'm still kind of playing with how that works. So in terms, so I've talked about face features. Then you're talking about scale. So, you know, what's your build? Um, and this is where you're looking to flatter the areas that you quite like about yourself, but conceal areas that you don't. And this is where I think the main takeaway is the rule of thirds. So to try and cut your body into, you know, um, either two thirds um, of like a dress, for example, at the top and then one third at the bottom. Or if you're wearing pants, two thirds of your body is your pants. Um, and then the one third is your top. Um, if you're half and half where you've got like a mid-waisted pant um, and a top, then you wear a jacket to kind of create length through the top. So it's about balancing out your features so that you look symmetrical. That's kind of the goal. So knowing your body shape, knowing your facial features, what you want to conceal and flatter um, helps you to create shapes through clothes, which is a lot of trial and error um, and so good to work on the Facebook group and see other people posting their pictures and you can see what works and what doesn't work. It's easier to see it on other people than on yourself. So um, I'm finding that going back through my outfit of the day on Instagram has been an absolute treasure trove of lessons to figure out, yeah, I didn't quite feel comfortable in that and this is why. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I didn't talk to you about my blush, which is the Luminous Flush by Hourglass. And I'm just about to put some highlighter on, which is the Euphoric Strobe Light. I'm gonna quickly finish my outfit of the day and then I'm going to come back show you the mess that is my wardrobe at the moment and unveil a couple of new buys. Okay, so, whoopsies, I decided to wear my hair in a high bun today. So I just wanted it off my face. Um, so I thought I would go for the opportunity to wear a high neck because usually I like to have my hair up when I wear a high neck make a bit of a V through the middle to kind of cut through all this fabric. And then I've kind of tucked it over itself and tucked it into my jeans, if you can see here. So I've kind of crisscrossed it over and tucked it in to create a more defined waist. So I will show you the full look. Um, I'll put some cutaways here, but I was playing around with bags and I want to use this one because I haven't used it for ever. So I've decided that I'm going to go super blue and pink. And then I was like, it's a bit cool. Like this is just a linen blouse. It might be a bit cool if we're not sitting in the sun. I might need something a little warmer, you know? And I was like, oh, what would I wear? Because these sleeves are quite, you know, blue sony. And I have decided for the first time in my adult life to, I'm going denim on denim. Oh my God. It's totally a vibe. <laughs> um, I'm actually quite excited to wear this with a pair of sunnies. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, yeah, Miami. Um, Audrey Hepburn, uh, 
Anyway, I'm going to um, I'm going to insert a mod shot. So that's what I'm wearing today. So you can see from this mod shot that I have unrolled my jeans. Normally, I have them quite cropped because I want to make my legs look really long. I um, want to make my waist look smaller, so I've got this blousy kind of top tucked in to create the illusion of a smaller waist. Um, and then it's quite blousy on top and soft um, pattern, so I think that kind of works to complement my face. But it's got to be done but undone. And so the combination of this beautifully structured bag with distressed jeans, um, and I haven't mentioned my shoes yet, but you would have seen those being unboxed in my probably latest unboxing video. They are the Jimmy Choo Bassette Raffia Heel in the 65 centimeter in Bali. They are amazingly comfortable. I think I sized up half a size just because of the strap that goes across the top of my foot, um, but insanely comfortable. I would buy them in the black. I would buy them in the flats. Like they're just awesome. Anyway, so that's gonna be my look for my quick lunch today because I can't stay the whole time. I'm literally gonna pop in, have a drink, maybe have some taramasalata and go because I've gotta actually have lunch with my dad and my husband. Um, so yeah, that's the outfit of the day. Um, this room is a bit of a mess because I've still got all of my boxes and things from the unboxing. There's another unboxing that you haven't seen yet. Look, there's lots of things to show you. Um, I've had a lot of seeds planted for a long time. I need to put these things down. Um, where can that go? <laughs> so I've had a lot of seeds planted for quite a long time. Deposits paid, you know, things on reserve, and now they're finally all trickling through. So it is going to look like I have been a busy beaver um, over the next few weeks, I suppose. I'm going to try and break that up to keep bringing you some fun content. I will do some dedicated um, styling videos, but I just wanted to weave it in and start talking about it now, like what I'm learning and how I'm applying it. So a couple of things I want to show you before I keep tripping over them. You would have noticed on Instagram, um, I revealed a couple of pieces that I have recently acquired and they're so, so gorgeous. The first one are these amazing shoes by number 21. Now, I'll find the box. So that's the box. They are called Razo 144 Light Flower Embellished Mid Heel. Um, I sized up a whole size because I've got a wide foot in these and you can see the footbed is quite narrow. Um, they are a little investment. I had never heard of this shoe brand before. Um, and I found them here locally in a boutique in Brisbane called Marion's. I'll link their website in the description box below and I'll link these shoes as well if I can find them anywhere. But these are the most divine creation. Each of these flowers actually has like a wire in it. And so the sales staff there, I was literally walking past, I was not expecting to purchase anything because I've been a little busy beaver lately and these struck me. They were on the top shelf. This heel height is probably 65 centimeters. So a perfect heel and the flower just sits, sorry, on your ankle. Um, you can have it at the front of the shoe or the back. Um, I will probably do like a little reels on Instagram. They scotch guarded these for me and showed me how to style them. And honestly, you can adjust where the flower sits just by kind of pulling this through. Now, I'm not gonna pull it through because it's in the perfect position for where I want it. But um, yeah, I, such a great find, like a beautiful neutral. They are satin. There are some shoe repairers we talked about who do, um, I guess, clean fabric shoes but just look at how divine they are. So I styled these up with another new purchase that I hadn't revealed here either. Um, <laughs> and I'll just do that now. I'll just grab it now. So you guys were pretty excited, as was I, that I got my first official ready to wear piece, I suppose. 
this Fendi double breasted blazer. Now this funny story, just scrolling as you do. Look at that. Just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I found this, I typed in Fendi on the satire website and I found this blazer in the menswear department. And I was like, oh, I don't know what size I am. And I was looking to find measurements and there were no measurements, just size conversions. And I always find the size conversions not reliable at all because I've been doing the styling course, I'm more aware of my measurements. So I was trying to find what the measurements were. Then I reached out to my Fendi SA in Sydney and said, hey, do you happen to have the measurements for the men's Zucker double-breasted blazers? I'm looking at a, this is an Italian 50 in the men's, which is equivalent to a 44 in women's, which is like a size 14. Anyway, um, we worked out that it was likely going to fit me. So Ty don't have the best returns policy. So I had to kind of go right. If I buy this, then I'm not going to get shipping back. I am going to be responsible for sending it back at my own cost. That's going to be, and there's an $88 hold for duties, I think, and $30 per item for postage. So it was going to cost me $300 for the gamble is what I kind of worked it up to. And I thought it was worth it. Just a moment. Hey. All right, so I bought it because it was $1,000 off. That's right, $1,000 off recommended retail. Um, if I can find anything similar, I will link it down below. Um, I love the fact men's blazers have all these hidden pockets. The only problem that I have with this particular piece is the fact that it has rather long arms, but I am going to get those tailored, so I'm using the old hair lackey trick to scrunch them up for the moment. Where was I? So men's blazers, they have a lot of pockets in them where you can keep stuff. So you can take your tiny bags and carry all the other stuff in your blazer. Um, super excited that I, well, um, when I received this, it um, I had it delivered to a DHL depot. It came pretty quickly, I think, and it came from Florence. Um, I ripped it open in the car with an old pen. I ripped the box open. I got out of the car. I threw off the blazer that I was wearing. I put it on and I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God. I had no mirror. I was in the car park of a service station or a gas station for you Americans. And I was like, thank God it fits. Most random unboxing ever. So um, yeah, I'm super stoked. I can't wait to go and get the alterations done. I did style it up with those shoes. I'll move over here, I'll put that look in um, on Instagram for a meetup with, sorry about that dog barking. She's gonna kill me. Um, with some other YouTubers here in Brisbane, Ada Solly, The Closet by Connor, and Narelle, who is a going to start YouTube maybe or has a new Instagram page so I will link all their details down in the description box below too. I'll do a dedicated video on this one and styling it because I'm going to need to figure out how to style this thing so it would be great to go on that journey with you guys too. Dogs, I love them but god they're hard work. All right so I am going to pack these things up, I'm going to pick out a lip colour because I just realised I don't even have one on yet brush my teeth and then I'm gonna get on the road to go and get my nails done. All right, so we are on our way to get my nails done. I didn't need to get some cash. And I was taking my outfit of the day photos and I was like, oh, you know how when you overanalyze something, you start to second guess yourself. Anyway, I decided against the double denim. Uh, I've thrown on a I've thrown in, I should say, a black blazer. Um, I felt like it was all just, just a little washed out for me. I'm sure I'm going to learn something about colour theory in the next couple of weeks. The next module is wardrobe organisation, which I have not started because as I said, I've got my dad visiting, so I don't really have free time between work 
So I'm just taking these little opportunities where I have them to film and do bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, there's wardrobe organization and then we get on to color. And I think that's probably going to really help explain some of the things that I love, but that don't potentially flatter me as much as I like. Now, the other thing I really like about this program is yes, there are rules for shapes and, and features and scaling and all those sorts of things. However, your personal style is still important. So you can break those rules. And if you think about some of those style icons like Iris Apfel and the Olsen twins where they really hide their shape, you know, they're petite and they look even more petite because of the massive clothes that they wear. Um, you know, that's their personal style. So don't lose your personal style. And it's really refreshing to hear stylists say things like that because I usually get the perception, perception I say, through my eyes anyway, that there is a formula and that formula you know, if you follow it, then you're always going to have something to wear in your wardrobe. And I just don't, I, I don't believe it's that easy, but we shall see at the end of this. So I do need to do the wardrobe organization. I feel like it's a bit premature though. I, I should be doing the wardrobe organization after I figure out the colors that work best, but maybe there's some hacks and things that I'm not aware of um, that might make those colors work. So. I haven't looked at that module because I thought, oh, that sounds tedious. Um, <laughs> but I think it's about things that fit you, um, you know, things that are in good condition. That's kind of the rule about getting organized, having all your things sorted. I'm pretty good with that. Like, I love my wardrobe. Um, I feel like it's very organized. I can find everything that I need. So I'm lucky in that way. I, I feel like I've three quarters done that but we shall see uh so yes um so there you go maybe maybe it's an opportunity lost with the double denim who knows maybe it's um a good thing that i swapped out the jackets so yeah i am going to try and get some clips um of my nails getting done i've got no idea i have no vision for them i just know that i want some fresh claws talons whatever you want to call them so um but i am kind of enjoying the lengths they've gone beyond that really annoying length now where i actually quite like them being this long so but the thing that worries me though is that they're likely they're more likely to break now that they're this long so anyway um first world problems right so i will Catch you at the nail appointment. Okay, I totally forgot to vlog because we were catching up. We had the whole birth story and everything to go through. So I didn't vlog, but I wanted to share with you my nail look um, inspired by, I'll put the still photo up here, um, a nail place that I follow in Sydney, VW Nails, I think it is. Anyway, I love all the negative space stuff. So yeah, I thought this was really cool. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Um, I'll take a photo anyway. But yeah, I really like that. I love that whole negative space kind of thing with the nails. It's very on trend. Um, so I'm going to head to the valley now. So, guys, I went to lunch and I didn't vlog. <laughs> I told you it's the vlog with the worst ending ever because it just... It doesn't end. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is a good view of my nails though, isn't it? it looks good. Nice. Um, yeah, I literally, the traffic was bad. And so then I was rushing to lunch and then I didn't really, I wasn't of the mind set to like film where we were. And then we were just dead into catching up and Oh my God, it's so wonderful to eat with women who just want to order a bit of everything and try everything and aren't ashamed to eat 
God, we had a good time. It was fabulous. It was so, so good. So great to catch up with Nadia and Lucinda. May we eat together again soon because, wow, we demolished that Greek feast. It was amazing. Um, so guys, sorry if you've been hanging out. Um, I'll get a photograph of Nadia. She took a selfie just before we left, thankfully. Um, I'll put that in as evidence that it did happen. Uh, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm now driving home. I haven't quite, you know, popped the jean button open. I'm, it feels all contained in there, you know, the big belly full of food. So um, I'm confident that it will remain that way. But um, thank you so much for joining me in this weird day, semi-vlog with the worst most disappointing end. Um, what can I say? I'm out of practice. I'm out of practice. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll see you in my next vlog. I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed what I have provided anyway. Ciao guys. Bye.